All right, welcome back to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm Sean Noble. And I'm Chris Clements. We are Merry sh- Christmas. Yeah, well, it's getting there. It's the Christmas, Christmas season. Season. The season of giving. It also is the season of college football playoffs. It is. And the, uh, the eternal farce that is the college football playoffs. Chris is going to give us a little education. I, oh, I don't, I don't know if I can give you an education. All I can, you can say is that. You can give me an education. Let's put it You know, we, we are waiting breathlessly for the 12-team playoff, which seems to be in the works. They, they seem to be moving in that direction. Um, however, if you're, if you're a conference champion like, like Baylor um, and others, you're, you're looking into this thing thinking, hey, you know, we, could, we can compete with those, those four teams just as well as anybody else. Yeah. And look at what happened with, with Utah. I mean, Utah is going to go play Ohio State in the Rose Bowl, and they beat the, the, the one other team that beat Ohio State, Oregon, twice, <laughs> not, by, not by a touchdown. Right, they they right. beat them handily. So uh, if, if you're Utah, you're thinking, well, I mean, if we beat if we beat Ohio State, we can we can play some more. We should be able to play some more, but yeah. we can't. Because Utah, they beat Ohio State. I mean, because Utah's ranked 13 and Ohio State's six, I think. Yeah, that's that would be a pretty big upset. Well, I, I don't think anybody wants to play Utah right now. Yeah, quite frankly, I think they're they're that good. And. Uh, and they, they they're winning the old fashioned way. They're winning in the trenches. They're winning with just smash mouth football. So help me understand. Of course, the way their this... players are like 22, 23, you know, well, 25. It's like, it's like BYU. Yeah. They and, have some uh, older players. They're good good Mormon boys. Yeah. 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 It's coming back from their missions and playing college football. More Mormon boys at BYU than Utah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that is true. I don't know why that is. Well, but. BYU, you know, put a shellacking on the University of Southern California two weeks ago. Yes, they did for the for USC's final home game, and then, you know, just when the misery of US of being a USC alum, season ticket holder, all the above, which I am, could uh, just when you're wallowing in your misery, you, you wake up the next morning on Sunday morning and it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> because it's announced that Lincoln Riley is coming to USC. Yeah. And then everything that happened throughout the season it doesn't matter. <laughs> just kind of fades away Wait into for Never Never year. Land. Right. Wait till and next which year. Was, which was a nice Sunday to wake up to. And, and I kept having to look at my, my phone and think, is this real? This can't be real. And, and that's another discussion I'd love to have on the, you know, the college football you know, coaching carousel, as it were, that happened that weekend and has continued leading up to the college football playoffs is just and the bowl season is just unbelievable it's it's like we've never seen anything before yeah yeah it begins with lincoln riley uh losing uh, oklahoma coach for for those who are listening who are who don't know lincoln riley uh, had won at the university of oklahoma uh he'd won four five you know big 12 championships he um had two um Heisman Trophy winners. He's he's just it was approaching Oklahoma legendary stat, right. status, and he loses to Oklahoma State in in the uh, not the champion in the division game. Division playoffs. And um and wakes up the next morning and and gets this massive offer from the University of Southern California. Now those are those who are following the USC coaching search and they fire their coach Clay Helton earlier in the season, mm-hmm. rightfully so, after a disastrous loss to Stanford. And Stanford went on to only win three games, as it were. Um, Lincoln Riley was, was, wasn't even on the radar. He wasn't even on the, on the table. And for USC to actually pull this off was nothing short of a miracle. Well, they had, what's, what was the, what's he going to get paid? Well, uh, word has do we it, know? and it's a, <clears throat> it's a private school, but word has it, it's upwards of $100 million plus... Uh, six million dollars to buy his house uh, to buy a home in Southern California plus private use of uh, he has a use of a private jet which in Southern California you, what, you really what, don't mean million over how many years um, I think it's 11 years holy smokes so they're tying him up for a long time and it's and and most of these co- coaching contracts are now doing that they want to tie these marquee coaches up for a long time because then what happens shortly thereafter Brian Kelly of the University of Notre Dame announces that he's leaving for LSU. Now, that was a little bit less 
classy in terms of how that happened. <laughs> because Brian Kelly was at a recruiting trip. He was actually in a, uh, a prospect's home, and then it leaked out that he was going to be flying to LSU to, to sign with LSU. Uh, it was all over Twitter, and he had to tweet out a, a, a or either tweet out or email out a message to his players oh that, my that this was indeed happening and he would speak with them the next morning. Um, he went back to Notre Dame the next morning, spoke with them all of 10 minutes. Nobody said a word and he walked out uh, pretty much in disgrace. Oh, wow. And then Notre Dame went off, went ahead and hired their defensive coordinator, which I, I still don't understand how that, how that works. Um, their defensive coordinator does not have any head head coaching experience, um, and uh, and and Brian Kelly actually thought he would be bringing half of his staff with him, and that, that fell didn't on, happen. That he fell on his face there. Ooh. So it's just been a it's just been a crazy couple of weeks, and then um, the Oregon coach announces he's going to to uh, Miami this week, mm. and so Oregon now is left without a coach. It's fascinating that. Uh, these college football coaches, a fair number of them are making more than NFL football coaches. Yeah, they are. That's remarkable. That's that. Yeah, they're making in, in the excess of now eight, nine, ten million dollars. And I suppose year. it's because you don't at this, but we haven't until recently. There might be it might become an issue, but we haven't been paying the players, so an NFL team has to deal with huge contracts with players. So there's probably less to deal with coaching but college football i mean some of these schools it's a major revenue generator and others it's not but where it is it's they've got the money to spend i guess well i mean the, the interesting thing about notre dame hiring marcus freeman who is their defensive coordinator i mean he, he's had a a pretty great a, a good coaching career he coached uh over at cincinnati for fickle he's he's coached at ohio state uh, he's well respected, well regarded by the players, but he's never had a head coaching job, and now he's going to be um, taking the reins of arguably the largest, co- I mean, the most renowned, the most storied, the most whatever c- college football program in the world. I mean, when Notre Dame goes to Ireland to play, it's <laughs> it's a big thing. Yeah, I mean, people follow Notre Dame football all over the world, and and so I think it's a risky move. I think it's a uh, versus a Lincoln Riley going from Oklahoma. To, to a USC, a lot of Oklahoma fans were rightfully upset um, at losing their their coach, and 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 t- took a lot of pot shots at USC. To which I would say, it's guys, it's it's USC. It's the largest. It's the second largest media market in, in the country. Yeah. It, it it you know it's Hollywood, but it's beside the point. The tradition there is it's USC, Notre Dame. Those are 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 two very much national brands that that you know, recruits and coaches and everyone else uh, look to. And USC has had, you know, a really tough 10 years, I would say. I mean, after Pete Carroll left and the NCAA sanctions came down with every, you know, with every intention of crushing the program. And then you had this coaching carousel, Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian and, and then finally Clay Helton. And Clay Helton, despite what people may think, was was not really hired to to win national championships. He was hired just to keep the team out of the ditch, which I think he did for the better part of his six years coaching them. Yeah, and and then when when they got a new new president at the university, a new athletic director, they took the last two years to really refine the program. They that's how they were able to get Lincoln Riley. So um, going back to current playoff. <clears throat> Yeah. So, is the top twelve teams have a have a possibility of getting to the national championship? No, no. I mean, th- what what they're what they're discussing. I mean, in the next several years, they're expanding that playoff to either eight or twelve teams. Okay. So you have several at large teams that that are not affiliated, like a Notre Dame right. or or whomever, who can get in, and then um, you would have a, the current bowl system, and that bowl system would feed into a playoff system. Okay. So I. I you know, I'm of the belief that if you win your con- conference champion, you should you should get an automatic bid to some sort of playoff system. Right. If you lose your conference champion, you can still maybe get an at-large bid if you're an Alabama 
or Georgia, you're, you're ranked high enough. But if you're not, that's it. You're out. Yeah. You know, you, you can go to a secondary bowl. Uh, and I think that's the fairest way of, of, of doing something like this. Now, now people will say, oh, well, we're playing too much football as it is. Oh, it's, it, it, it lengthens the season. Well, it is all about money. Right. <laughs> so, right. so if you throw enough money at a playoff system like that with TV and everything else, and, and to your point, players are being pl- paid you know, somewhat with endorsements and, and they can use their name. Uh, but those are that's only happening with the key players. Yeah, that's only happening with the super. Well, and motivate the players would be motivated to get into a playoff system. Absolutely, gives them more exposure. Absolutely. So, so it, it could not. I, I think with with the situation which you saw last weekend with Alabama upsetting Georgia, and that was an upset, but it was a shellacking of an upset. Yeah. But Georgia was favored. You know, and and now you have Alabama. You have Georgia still in. Still in I mean, the playoff. Ranked number three. Yeah, they're ranked number three. You have this idea that Cincinnati has not really played anybody. They don't really deserve to be in in the playoff, but they beat Notre Dame. Yeah, um, and their coach is doesn't seem to be leaving. <laughs> um, <laughs> so although he was he game. was mentioned for a lot of different jobs, and uh, and doesn't seem to be leaving, so he's going to see this one out. But uh, a lot could happen uh, in the next several weeks. Yeah, well, so here in Arizona, Fiesta Bowl's the big thing for us here in the Valley. We've got Notre Dame and Oklahoma State. Yeah. Who do you you think Notre Dame wins that? That's a tough one. Oklahoma State is is a really good team, and they are a smash, <laughs> smash mouth football team. The, the, the interesting part of that, the drama of that game is is Marcus Freeman. It's, yeah, it'll be his first, you know, head coaching opportunity. How he will get that staff to gel together? Will he get those players to gel together? How he will manage the game? Now you have to manage the game. You know, head coaches aren't necessarily, you know, coaches per se in, in terms of dealing with individual players. They they manage right the enterprise. The, their general uh, general managers. Yeah, they manage the enterprise, zone. and yeah. they you know. So it's, it, he will be on the hot seat, and we'll see how well he does. Oklahoma State is Oklahoma State. They've had the same coach for a long time. Yeah. And he's going he's gonna to throw everything he can at, at Notre Dame. And that's going to be a great football game, and it's going to be well attended um, here in the Valley of the Sun. But then yeah. you've got ASU playing Wisconsin up at the Las Vegas Bowl. Yeah. When is Wait, that? That is December 30th. The 30th, okay. I'll tell you, it's looking and at ASU is limping into the Las Vegas Bowl against what what is a really good Wisconsin team. Always well, good be, Wisconsin yeah, team. They eat a lot of cheese up there. They're, too bad Alex isn't here to talk about Wisconsin. He's from Wisconsin. Where is he? I don't know. Taking some time off, well deserved. Um, all right. Well, yeah. it'll be interesting to watch. I, I just for the sake of, I'm not a big fan of Alabama. I'd be fine if they did not win this thing. Um, yeah, I, but I don't know who I would prefer. I mean, Michigan, yeah, you know. You know what's interesting? I, I read this article the other day about Alabama. Maybe Cincinnati pulls it off. Huh? Cincinnati could pull, pull it off. They are a very good team, and they're playing extremely well. Nobody really wants to play Cincinnati, I think. Um, but interesting thing about Alabama, you got to give, you know, them credit. They they have produced an extraordinary amount of not only – Phenomenal players for the NFL, but but coaches who have gone on to be head coaches and have and either have cleaned up their act and done very very well, uh, especially two former USC coaches, right. and Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian. They they've cleaned up their act and they're 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 they've got programs booming. Old Miss is is a very dangerous program. Now Texas did not have a good year. It was Sarkeesian's first first season, but he, he has to. He has to revamp that entire program, and that's going to take some time. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you got to give them credit. They've been a football, you know, factory machine, and I would, I, they would be my favorite to win the national championship right now. I mean, why not? Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we'll talk about I that. I mean, Nick, Nick Saban, <laughs> he's he he downplays a lot. He's like, you know, don't read the press. You guys have counted us out, but. You know, most likely they're going to have the Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. 
That's probably true. You know, with their quarterback who who uh, was heavily recruited in, in Southern California. Okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll revisit this after we the will. new year when after we new uh, year. see a little bit closer uh, vision of what's going on. But what's going sure. on in our world here in, well, the, in the backyard? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, there was a uh, proposal put out by a gubernatorial candidate, Who? Carrie Lake. Who? Carrie Lake. Carrie Lake. She wants that, to put she's a cameras, former broadcaster. Former Carrie, broadcaster. Carrie Lake, Fox and, 10. You know, someone who uh, has been on TV, you know, for a long time, wants to put cameras in every classroom in Arizona. You know, I saw that. Now, now what do you think would happen? Well, other if, than how many different creepers would be, uh, you know, checking in on elementary school kids. And I mean, it, the, the, the idea is is insane insanity I yeah mean, and it was d denounced does she get that from her teleprompter i, I think? think she did did it pop up on the, it on the teleprompter as she was speaking and she just decided to I mean, regurgitate she, it she might have it might be her idea i don't know i mean she is a tv personality so you know so more tv more tv watch more tv more tv cameras in the classroom yeah um i mean it just there's so many issues to Privacy. monitor the teachers, those evil teachers. Well, I mean, I mean, I get the whole CRT thing. I get the people's, you know, they, they want to know what's being taught in class. But that's why that's why the educational system should be open, right? And and, 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 and go to the school board level and and be involved in when they're discussing curriculum. Have your voice heard. I mean, curriculum should be online. Everything should be posted. Yeah. Teaching plans should be posted. Everything, you know, everything should be should be there for. For parents to see so that they know. No question. Whether it's um, public schools, private schools, charter schools, which are public schools, but anything. Yeah. And, and I agreed with the governor yesterday when he kind of slammed the idea. Oh, did, did yeah. Ducey slam yeah, the idea? Yeah, Ducey slammed the, the whole idea, and he hasn't spoken about the governor's race at all, but it was obvious he was taking a, you know, a shot at Kerry and, and the, this whole idea. And he said, listen, the way we get through this is, is transparency. In, in education, right, and the board, the school boards need to be transparent. They need to offer, you know, parents a chance to voice their opinion. You can't be targeting parents for being terrorists when they come and voice their opinion against CRT or against it, but any other issues. Wait, because Carrie Lake said that when she, the day she got elected, she was going to defund the FBI efforts to monitor school board meetings. Now. Okay. Not quite sure what she meant by that because it is the Federal Bureau of Investigation and she is running for governor in the state of Arizona. So that was a teleprompter error. Oh, okay. Mistype. That was a, whoever was typing, you know, misled her down down a rabbit hole. Because the FBI <laughs> and the state government don't really uh, hang out yeah. together. I mean, you some know. law enforcement guys might, but this the, I, I, it, 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 this issue of education, the, the challenges that our kids face as a result of the pandemic um, going forward, we need to make things, we need to get back to the basics, we need to make things more simple, we need to make them transparent. Uh, so, and frankly, we need a governor who is going to be rational and smart about this and not just throw stuff out there based on, oh, I think the base will like to hear this. Yeah, it's just I mean, red, it, it's red meat. That's and, all it is. And it's just, but it's, it's embarrassingly stupid to but, say something like well, that. Well, that's what happens when, when you just read a teleprompter. Yeah. Things pop up, and then you don't know that you're supposed to say Because you haven't it. thought through it yourself. Well, look what happens with our fair president, the poor man. <laughs> Poor, poor man. I feel bad for him because the teleprompter doesn't lie. And so if the, he gets lost and the teleprompter says something and then he says something else, then the whole country is in a dither. Yeah. We just don't know what to do. That's the problem with teleprompters. I'm, I'm quite Those certain. evil teleprompters. Well, and, and Barack Obama, he only had teleprompters too. <laughs> yeah. But he was smart enough that if the teleprompter was saying something, it yeah, he would, he would go he off. He, he would go off script. Unfortunately, just, just a if little you've bit. read the news for thirty years, you don't know how to ad lib. And uh, if you're Joe Biden, who he knows? Had, he had a hard who time knows? with with uh, 
with some stuff the other day and it was all over. Well, this, you and know, and it's, they it's kicked sad. off this this democracy conference, uh, and it it wasn't smooth sailing. Uh, the democracy? You mean the the call between he and Putin? No, no, no. no. Oh. This was a hundred nations. He kicked oh, off this thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, it was all telepromptered and well, a couple if you, stumbles. If you see, and I don't know when I said this, but there's a picture of him meeting with Putin of that meeting that happened the other day about Ukraine. Right. And he has a little screen right in front of him. He has notes, but he has this little screen right in front of him. And I'm like, well, there's the telephone. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. I'm wondering where it was, but there it was. Robin, did you see it? Uh, oh, it was great. It's, I, I fear. <gasps> you <And> fear? <sighs> I, yeah, I fear. I weep. <laughs> <laughs> I weep. <laughs> oh, we got to get through this next election, and then it's going to be two years of just chaos because I, I, I don't know how he gets into 2024. I think well, they're going to. I, I still think that there's going to be some kind of an event. I mean, maybe Omicron gets him. I don't know. <laughs> they're um, going to get a variant, and, and they're going to stretch this thing out until they can actually kill him off with COVID because he, I don't know. I don't know how they'll spin it. You mean but Omicron. Omicron. I've been saying, I said it the wrong. The Transformer. Last episode, I called it Omicron. Oh, me let's make it easy. Let's just call it, like I said, let's just call it Megadeth. 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 Because that's exactly how we've all reacted. Oh, my like, gosh. <laughs> isn't it, though? We're all going to die. It's, and it's a, it's, it's a cold. You know, you know <laughs> it's gotten ridiculous when scientists who are very COVID cautious are now saying, whoa, wait a minute, guys, just freaking calm down. Well, the, the scientist, the doctor in South Africa who discovered, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't know how you discover a variant, but sh she did. And, and she was treating this patient and, you know, Britain goes to lockdowns, all this hysteria erupts all across the world. And she, she sends out this missive saying, wait, time out, everybody. It's, it's, well, it's nothing more than a cold. Yeah. I talked about this last week and, and, and it is, and, and it's now we're seven days later. We have more information, and the more information shows mild symptoms. Mild yes, symptoms. it might be tr more transmissible. That's not a bad thing no. because we can get to herd immunity. Oh, everyone! You, you saw needs yesterday, a couple days ago, the you know Pfizer. Well, you know, two doses on Omicron, not quite, but the third dose that gets you there. Yeah, yeah. No, no just, money involved there. No, just get get, get the Omicron. And yes, there's the still Omicron. no freaking discussion about natural immunity. Nope. A buddy of mine in, uh, 16 months ago had COVID, had a uh, How antibody test. How did we go from college football to education, Cary Lake, to, because to, every, to Omicron? Because Omicron. Well, we're ranting. We're this ranting. is how rants is how go. We do it. Maybe we should wrap this up. No, this is fun. We're actually having a good time. You okay? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good. Oh, I'm fine. okay. Well, then let's keep going. I'm fine. <laughs> I, I, my thing, it got moved to me. Oh, so we're sweet. Good. Let's just keep going. Well, then we'll just keep going because we can rant on this for. Well, the oh, natural I'm immunity. You, like you, you mentioned with. natural immunity, and I have a friend who just got a boost. I have two friends, family friends who just got a booster. And they're like sick. Oh, sure. They're sick, and and they've been sick for days. I go, why did you get a booster? You're not. You're barely fifty. You're not. Do you have heart problems? No. You're not obese. You're in great shape. Well, because you don't they need? were said. They, yeah, they were you don't need to get a, a booster. booster. You, what are you trying to boost against? And and so with the Omni, Omicron or Omicron or whatever it is, what what it really is telling us is that as as these variants advance, they're getting less and less virulent in their in their uh, in the sickness. They're, right. They're they're, they're and, less and, dangerous. And that, they that, may and, be more transmit. They're figuring out how to get around the issue of of not transmitting but they are definitely not as deadly and they're not as deadly I, yeah. you know maybe there will be one that comes that's more deadly i don't know but we the the fact is it's here to stay we're not going to eradicate it no. anytime in no joe soon. biden declared when he was elected he was going to end yeah, covid yeah it's not going to end and uh, that's like saying i'm going to end the flu right right
No. No. And and you know, does it mean to, that there will be vaccines on an annual basis? You know, Doctor Faustus has not ended AIDS yet, and he and it's true. But he made a lot of money trying. Yeah, he did. Yeah, highest paid uh, federal employee. Yeah, in uh, in the government. Um, Ann Coulter had an excellent little take on that in her latest article. Who was a guest of the show? That's if anybody right. wants to go check it out, how much how much fear mongering, Doctor Faustus made during the 1980s on the AIDS crisis yeah. and, and, and need, needlessly created, you know, hysteria where there didn't need to be. Well, fear is how those in, the, in his field make money. Yep. Because if we don't fear something, then we're not motivated to pay for the things that they want. Yeah. Um, I, the thing that, because I, it is to me, it is in fact a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy theory. It is in fact con a conspiracy that nobody, no public officials, no media, certainly not the drug companies, are talking about natural immunity. No. And they're because pushing that, the booster, pushing the booster, pushing the booster. You know, first they push the vaccine. Now they're saying, oh, two isn't enough, but you got to do three because Jimmy Fallon has a Christmas song about getting your booster. Oh my gosh. With first Ariana it was Colbert Grande. and the vaccine oh, dance yeah. and oh yeah, that's how crazy it is. It's it's actually quite funny, but but it's insane. That's and that's how insane it's gotten. It's like you must get your booster or else you cannot come to dinner. Well, it's uh, the, in New York City. Uh, well, New York City's gone <laughs> nuts because they're now you know De Blasio has now mandated that every employer has to have employees, all their employees have to be vaccinated. If you're five and up, you have to be vaccinated to go into any kind of a public yep. space. Which is nuts. Um, less than 50% of African Americans in New York City are, are vaccinated. Less than 60% of Hispanics. So who's it going to hurt? Yeah, who's it going to hurt? The very people that we need to be helping the most. Yeah, exactly. It's insane. Yeah. Mayor de Bloviate. I mean, he's three weeks out, two weeks out of finally being out of there. I mean, yeah, I don't know. People are on a countdown. There should be a countdown in Times Square. Well, but the problem is that his replacement came out and said, "If you think anything's going to change, you're wrong." I'm, I believe in this. So, I don't know how long that'll last. Yeah, because they're going to have. There's going to be a mass exodus coming out of New York to Florida. There already is. Well, oh, and Arizona. But I, I mean, but I, I can't tell you how many friends. But I think it's going to be. You know, mostly the exodus has been. You've, you've had the money to sell your home company, you know, yeah. and you have the, the flexibility in your job. I think they're going to start seeing middle class, middle, lower middle class folks leaving the boroughs. Well, why wouldn't um, you? I mean, even if you can't move to Florida, I mean, just moving south, just Rhode moving, Island. Yeah. Moving know. somewhere. It's anywhere. Yeah. But it's just, you know, it, it, it's the crisis that we see in New York. It's so sad because New York's such it's it's the greatest city in the world. You according were, to the Hamilton, you, you were there. Not I was there a couple, uh, weeks, ago. A couple weeks ago. I can't even imagine going there right now. It well, well first of all, I, there's no lines for any the no sightseeing for stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I we bought you know the express stuff to go to the Empire State Building and didn't the, need that. <laughs> bought the express thing to go to World Trade Center, didn't need that. Um, I mean, it was great to be there. Uh, you know, it. it Took my father-in-law. He'd never been there before. Oh, wow. He'd driven through, you know, once. So it was a bucket list for him. And it was a quick trip, but we got a lot in those two days and uh, had a lot of fun. We're going to go back. Um, we'll see when because, you know, I don't know what the requirement. I mean, we we had to show our vaccine card to go into restaurants. So what do they do when you show the card? Do they just take a picture of it? Do they no, no, write you, it all down? You show do the card, and you like, sh and most of the places, not all of them, ask for your ID to compare it to the card. Okay. So but most of them don't care. No. No. That's and so and not every place, not even every place was requiring a mask. Um, yeah. Some of the smaller places were like, no. Yeah, we're fine. Um, so... But it was crazy. I mean, we were around, walking around Central Park. There are people walking around Central Park with masks on. Yeah. Well, that's still uh, the case, in, in, even around in this town. Still so outside. 
outside. You still, I still see people, a lot of people walking around with masks. And that's, you know, that's a whole nother podcast, but that's been probably well, the it's, biggest, biggest oh, farce of all. Oh, far the biggest pile of crap. Because if you're not wearing an N95, it doesn't matter what no, you're wearing. No. I mean, maybe the KN95 helps a little. But oh, well, yeah, if you want to get numerical about it. Was it was funny. I had a friend that's like, yeah, I was wearing this KN95, but man, it's so hard to breathe in that thing. <laughs> really? Yeah, right? That's the so point. that means if you can breathe barely, you know, fairly normally in any other mask, it's not working. Well, Dr. Faustus said the other day, okay, even if you're triple vaxxed, you've got your, your two Pfizer shots and your booster, you, and if you're in, you know, somebody's home, you should still wear a mask. To protect what you or uh, them or what, and it just insanity. made no sense. And and he said before the cloth masks really aren't worth the paper you know they're made of. Right. <laughs> well, my you know I I'm not Those a scientist. Are just I'm not paper a doctor. And cloth. I'm not anything, but I've done a lot of reading on this, and and ultimately, we just have to use common sense and and recognize that this is going to be here for a while, and we need to mitigate the risk, just like we do in all everyday life. Uh, you know, you, you decide when you get up in the morning and go out and get in your car that you are going to risk your life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what the risk is depends a lot on how good of a driver you are, uh, you know, various other factors, but you could die. Yeah. And guess what? That's, and it's fairly random at times. I mean, it's 50% of the time it's random, right? You, because... You're either at fault because you've done something, you're drunk, or you're driving stupidly, or you run a red light. But or you're on you, your phone. Yeah. Or but if if you're the you know if you're the victim of somebody who ran a red light or is drunk, you know that that's random. Yeah. Dying from COVID is not random. It's not random because you die if you have too little vitamin C, you have comorbidities, or you're fat. Yep. I mean, it just it's so if you are in any of those situations, fix yourself, take the precautions, get the vaccine, get the booster, whatever, but recognize that if you're fairly healthy and smart, you're not going to die from this. You're not going to die from this. Your kids are certainly not going to die. Oh, from no, this. that's been the biggest lie of all. I mean, we've under the, the, the children under the age of 18, there have been 740 some deaths across the country out of a a population of 73 million. Yep. That's a point zero 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 one. And chance. and that was that was due to the factors that you spoke about. Yeah, kids with obesity K or kids with obesity, diabetes, heart conditions, things of that nature where this disease does attack. Right. So, uh you have more if, if there's anything that hasn't happened and we've talked about this before that the government should be you know promoting is Health. Yeah, that's it, that is is, the, is healthy lifestyles. Working out. The fact that you know the, now now all these stats are coming out about what the lockdowns really did to people's health, to mental well, health, to physical health, and to the mental health of young people. You know what's killed more young people in the last two years than COVID? Suicide. Suicide. By a you know, huge by factor. a huge margin, and that had everything to do with the lockdowns. Yeah. Well, so, it's not, so, so it's thank not you, Doctor Bricks. Thank you, Doctor Fauci, for for exacerbating the problem and exacerbating the problem. The the and the, the what we don't know yet and will come to pass over the next few years is how much of a developmental issue will happen with kids, especially well, kids like my kids' age, not developing. You know the right speech patterns, that kind of thing, because everyone's wearing a mask. You know, well, I so mean, much, so much of that development has to do with interaction, right? With human to human interaction, and peer to peer interaction, and and that is what what feeds our our development. And you don't get that from a Zoom call. Nope. And for for children especially, it's especially damaging. very young children, like my six yeah, months, like ben, six months, so, six and a half months. So the, the, the teachers unions and the government officials that push lockdowns of schools, pushed um, you know, lockdowns in general, this is the price to pay. This yeah. is this is what the price they have to bear.
they and and it will be it will be a problem. Yeah, there's no question. It about will it. be acute. Some some the 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 Malcolm Gladwell of 20 years from now is going to come is going to write about this two or three year period and just there's going to be so much data about how fucked up this was. Can we say that on a podcast? <laughs> I'm Can't? sorry. I just that's awesome. This. It just has been outrageous. Yeah. We, we've handled it so badly. Well, well, and and what is equally outrageous is how quickly Americans have been to surrender to their liberties, to yeah. surrender to their freedom without any question. I mean, I understand and, when they said, you know, two weeks, we've got to bend the curve, but the, the stretching on and on and on and not recognizing, well, not only that, not, not only recognizing the things that we learned about it in the first couple months. Yeah. You don't really know. Does exercise work? Do you don't do blah, but we are now two years into this thing nearly, I mean, just about, and we've had plenty of time to educate people on taking vitamin C, getting out in the sun, getting exercise, stop eating so much crap, you know, losing a little bit of weight. I mean, yeah. you lose 10, 15 pounds. You can lose her 10, 15 pounds in a year. Yep. Anybody anybody unless you're very very thin then you shouldn't but you're not at risk unless you have some other comorbidity unless you're christian bale <laughs> right <laughs> lose the, weight overnight for right. a role but you and you're right no one's talked about it no and it's just incredible it. to me that how many people i mean for one thing it would just give them a little bit more sense of of security and saying okay i can manage the risk because i'm I feel pretty healthy. Yeah. I am pretty healthy, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, wow. I'm so frustrated. Yeah. But we're, we're climbing out of it. It's happening, sort of, maybe. What do you think the next variant will be? What do you think it will be called? Because Megadeth. Megadeth. <laughs> I mean, they've got to make the it as, as scary to as possible. The Tetris. All right. What well, Tetris? Variant. I what, Well, what are the Transformers? Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the transformative variant. Yeah, there you go. Which is yeah. highly contagious, but leaves you with sniffles. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we probably should wrap we this up. We probably should. This has been a good uh, rant, though. We've gone yeah. from college football to Carrie Lake and her teleprompter to Joe Biden and his teleprompter to Vladimir Putin all the way to COVID-19, which we always wind up at anyway. It seems that way. <laughs> um, and we're going to continue to beat the drum until people... And we do not out. hope that President Biden gets Omicron. No, we don't. Well, I mean, if he's going to get any of them, he should get that yeah, one because yeah, probably. it's the least deadly. Um, <laughs> yeah, most likely. But we don't <laughs> wish that on any. No, I don't. Look, the, I, in all seriousness, people need to take a risk assessment. And if you have any risk, freaking do all the things that you Absolutely. need to do. Absolutely. You know, yeah. if, if wearing a mask is something that makes you feel more safe, at least get one that works. Get your booster if, if you need to. Um, but do some things that are going to help you in the long term, like exercise and eating right and taking your vitamin D. Uh, get outside. Get run. Get outside. Be human. <laughs> run for your life. <laughs> yeah, right. That's really what it comes down to. Right. Run, 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 run for, for your, your lives. Lives. Be the I think thing. Kamala Harris might be thinking about that right now. No, she's Lead editorial in American Spectator, for anybody who reads, still reads American Spectator, is... Are the Democrats trying to force out Kamal Harris? Some are, and for sure. That will be probably the next podcast. Well, we we def that's a topic we're going to need to tackle because it, there's that, a lot. Going that whole shakeup is very interesting. I didn't take it seriously, but now I'm starting to. It, when you have the Washington Post doing a whole weekend series on it, yeah, uh, you need to pay attention. Well, when you know her numbers are double digits lower than it's, Biden's, it's the cackle. It's yeah, it's just cackle. All right. Where can, okay. where can they everyone find us? They can find us. Uh, well, biggest place is Star Worldwide Networks. Yeah, um, Star Worldwide, Instagram, Our Facebook, hosts. Twitter, the tweets, and any other places you might listen. Yeah, we're even on LinkedIn if you can believe it. Oh, LinkedIn! I, I always forget about that yeah, because we, I only log into LinkedIn about like once a month. Yeah, we're even there. And I get this. There's thing a big that, debate going you've on. You've been on in LinkedIn. thirty searches. In the last 30 days, yeah. pay us money to find out who's been searching. Like, <laughs> nah, I don't care. There's a big debate going on, on LinkedIn right now about whether politics and religion should be part of the platform. I'm like, well, then what else is there? Nobody really <laughs> wants to talk about business. Yeah, I don't see much about business. Yeah. 
Well, and uh, remember, we're all a podcast all about faith, freedom, and free enterprise, which are the founding principles of this great country. So God bless, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time. All right, see you guys.